Hello, family. This is James Sankey. June the 24th, 2020. Okay, y'all, this is, uh, uh, I was looking through YouTube a minute ago, and I come across this website, and they're talking about uh, uh, the chip, the brain chip, and all this stuff. And now this is what's coming. They're telling us, the devil always has to tell us what he's what he's up to. Now, he's telling us what he's up to right here. So, uh, uh, y'all watch it and tell me what you, what you think. And I'll make a comment at the end of this. And as well, I'm going to leave the, uh, this, uh, link in the description. Here we go. We no longer have intelligence services. We have a combined body that does intelligence, yes, which is useful in many cases, but it's also a counterterrorism service. It's also a propaganda service. It's also a covert action service. Uh, and it's doing all of these things that are actually fundamentally in conflict with intelligence gathering. A prime example that could not be more relevant today, of course, is cybersecurity. You have the agency that is in charge of hacking people it is also in charge of protecting people from being hacked. We can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. Organisms, whether viruses or bananas or humans, they are really just biochemical algorithms. And we are learning how to decipher these algorithms. When the infotech revolution merges with the biotech revolution, what you get is the ability to hack human beings. Intelligence before the end of next year. And, and then the, the interface to the, to the chip is, is wireless. So you have no wires poking out of your head. It's basically Bluetooth to your phone. Action potentials produce an electric field that spreads from the neuron and can be detected by placing electrodes nearby allowing recording of the information represented by a neuron. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens, because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. This will be the main products of the economy. What is DARPA? DARPA is the high-tech research branch of the Pentagon. And um, I'm currently the office director in the Biological Technologies Office. And operational play. The brain is the current and future battle space. The brain is the current and future battle space. What's new about this is the in-close nature of this. Increasingly, we're not seeing these things as weapons of mass destruction against gross aspects of the population. More specifically, perhaps, might be targeting individual might be targeting individuals on a level that allows either direct attribution or covert engagement with non-attribution. Probably the one that you've heard about most recently, most contemporaneously in, in the literature, is the possibility to use some form of directed energy to affect physiology peripherally and also to affect the physiology and health of the brain. Case in point here, U.S. Embassy personnel in Havana and possibly in China. The idea of going through the skull to modulate the node network activity of the brain, to implant certain brain machine interfaces, these are many of the DARPA programs that you may hear of now, probably the one that is the most notorious, is something called the N3 program, which is the non-invasive neurosurgical neuromodulation program being run by their program manager, Dr. Al Mundy. The idea here is to put minimal sized electrodes in a network within a brain to only minimal intervention to be able to read and write into the brain function in real time, remotely. And by affecting the way that brain is built and the way it functions, influence in ways that are kinetic and non-kinetic. The attitudes, beliefs, thoughts, emotions, activities. Look at the power that understanding tools and techniques the brain sciences afford. Speaking of mind control, is that Facebook's next potential step? I mean, they seem to be getting into just about everything else. And that includes uh, work around direct brain interfaces, uh, that are going to eventually one day uh, let you communicate using only your mind. 
Social media giant Facebook is in the process of acquiring Control Labs, a neural interface startup between $500 million to a reported $1 billion. The startup is known for its software, which enables users to control computer devices with their brain. We took the electrical activity of the brain directly, decode that electrical activity, and use that to directly control devices. That's the heart of a neural interface. Further, most recently, just a few weeks ago, it was announced that you could then aerosolize nanomaterials. And go one step further, I can create small robotic units, controllable robotic units at the nanoscale, and that these two can be aerosolized to create a nanoswarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see, that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes, mucous membranes, and wherever, mouth, nose, ears, eyes, can be then uptaken into the vascular system to create clumping, can affect the vascular system of the brain, or can directly diffuse into the brain space, and these can be weaponized. I'm going to show you uh, some software that I wrote. I'm going to show you some of the parameters I experiment with. Uh, the learning rate obviously can cause learning disabilities. This is a genetic factor. It can be altered uh, in many different ways. Uh, forgetfulness, uh, we can create dementia, Alzheimer's, and other uh, neurological problems. Pleasure causes a runaway reward process, uh, such as addictions and other things. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about pain and fear. Schizophrenia, very easy to create. Uh, you can do one uh, technique called an information overload, and that is uh, training it with too much data with too few neur neurons. Uh, or you can um, add this other parameter, external energy or external noise. We also see the use of biodata as a viable weapon. Manipulating biodata so that I can then put into your particular medical records subtle information that may change the disposition of whether you're sick or not, change how you're treated, influence the postures that go to you in terms of insurance, care, viability for military service. By altering that information, by changing those data, by purloining those data, I essentially change the you of you. Okay, so how many of you folks are going to go along with this system? Y'all know this is part of the beast system, the New World Order, and uh, they're getting it ready. This ain't no bullshit. They ain't went through all this stuff just for the hell of it. They're going to lay it out, and you're going to take it. Or will you? Well, that's yet to be seen. And uh, I think it's probably a good time right now for everybody to start praising the Most High God because your ass is on the line. How are you going to resist these people? What are you going to do? You going to stick a gun in their nose? If you even got one. Most of y'all ain't even got a damn gun. Well, you better figure it out because it's getting real close. Y'all going to have to make that decision. And it ain't no damn fence riding. You're either going to be on one side of the fence or the other. So don't think you're going to get away with riding in the middle because it ain't going to work. So I suggest, like I normally do, stop sinning, repent, get up on that straight and narrow path, abide by the Ten Commandments of God's law, turn back to the Most High. That's what He wants. He don't want to see anybody go to the fire. Neither do I. So, I pray you all get it. Because if you don't get it, it's going to get you. This is James Sankey, also known as the Hillbilly Hebrew, signing out. Love y'all much. All praise to the Most High God of Israel. You know it.